Hey, what's going on guys? It's Punk of Air for MMOBomb.com and welcome back to our Planetside 2 class overview series. Now if you remember from last time we took a look at the Infiltrator as well as the Light Assault and this week we're continuing on by looking at the Medic and respective Engineering class, the sort of support classes of Planetside 2. Now to start off with we're going to be taking a look of course at the Medic and the Medic just like the name sounds is the healing class available in Planetside 2. Now the Medic does use an Assault Rifle as their standard type of weapon and can swap that out for Shotgun if they feel the need to go close combat. Now the claim to fame for the Medic is his ability to use what's called the Medical Applicator which is a small little heal gun with no cooldown that allows them to maintain a steady stream of healing power towards their nearby allies. As long as the Medic holds down the gun he's able to heal any allies connected to but if he wants to revive an ally he must remain connected at all times until said ally is revived. If he breaks the stream early while the person is still downed, he'll have to start over in order to heal them up. After an individual has been revived, he will also be at low HP, which means that you'll have to heal him up further in order to get him back to full HP. Now the more points you put into this at medical applicator using the certifications, the quicker the gun will heal and also the more HP somebody will have once they've been revived to full. It is also worth mentioning that the Max class, while not being able to be healed by the Medical Applicator, since it's sort of like a Met class, will be able to be revived by the Medical Applicator. So you can revive a Max, it will only have about 7-8% to 8 of its Max HP, and then an Engineer will actually have to come along to heal it. Now beyond this, there are other types of healing abilities the Medic has at its uh, disposal. Namely, its claim to fame, which is its special ability, called an AoE Medical Applicator. Now what this does is resonate a sort of glowing green field around the medic and anyone around them at that period of time who's damaged will get healed. Now the more people around you that you're healing, the faster it will deplete, but you can spend more points in this certification in order to increase its output. Very much uh, a useful upgrade if you're going down the medic path. Now beyond this, the only other really unique aspect to the medic class would be the healing grenade and revive grenade. Now they're both very expensive, the heal grenade being 200 certification points and the revive grenade being 400 certification points. And they do just kind of what they sound. You throw out a healing grenade will heal near, nearby, nearby enemy or allies. And if you throw out a revive grenade, it will revive nearby allies, although not at full HP. So you kind of have to choose if you want to revive nearby allies and have to heal them up manually, or if you want to heal everybody up in a sort of circle around you in case you want to be a more proactive healer. Now beyond this, a medic can of course attach or equip C4. If they want to be a little bit more aggressive, C4 of course is a remote detonated uh, explosive which can be used to take out vehicles as well as terminals, etc. Now medic classes, as far as playing a medic class in the field of combat, you would want to be best behind most other people. A medic can surely do a ton of damage with their uh, assault rifle. They are quite capable of killing anybody. In fact, they have a great assault rifle available to them just to start off with. But if you want to be the best asset to your team, you're going to want to be behind the heavy assaults, the other people, the frontliners, and you want to heal up anybody that's been uh, downed, as well as just use your AoE healing ability for any big push. The AoE healing belly is great if you're getting hammered by explosions that do a lot of damage spread across a lot of people, or if you want to try to do a huge push into a base and you know you're going to be taking damage, a, crew, a group or a cluster of medics spamming that ability will be able to effectively move into a base and mitigate some of that bullet damage that they're no doubt going to incur. Now also a really great thing is if you're sort of being a little bit of a sneaky medic, you know, trying to infiltrate a base, having two medics, one that heals another one and the other one heals the same one, is a huge asset. Because essentially what will happen is both of you can engage a target. If one of you dies, the other one finishes the target off and then heals you up. You heal, you heal him for the damage he received and then you continue on. And this tag team is really, really crucial and essential if you want to get into a base just by yourself with a couple people. Overall, having a medic, a one to three medics in a squad of 12 is a necessity. You need medics in each squad to be able to heal everybody up and maintain the push. Otherwise, people are going to have to wait for several seconds to revive. Keeping that in mind, if you are waiting for a revive, do not release. If, you, if someone is in the midst of reviving you and you release, it completely cancels it out. They're no longer able to revive you, obviously. Now moving on from this, we have the Engineer. Now of course the Engineer is somewhat like the mechanical counterpart to the Medic, and it focuses on healing up me mechanized units as well as mechanized turrets and max suits. 
So the engineer has access to a carbine and can also buy the shotgun just like the medic. The carbines of course are just as powerful as the assault rifles, but focus on a little bit closer action whereas the assault rifles have a little bit more range to them. Now, unlike the medic, the, the engineer does have a repair gun, but the repair gun does have a overheat function. And what that means is you cannot repair a vehicle for an infinite amount of time. It will eventually overheat your gun, and you must wait for the complete cooldown of the gun before you can reuse it. Unlike the medic gun, which you can use infinitely. Now, it can be used on a numerous amount of things. Like I said, you are most likely, of course, going to use it on vehicles. It's great for healing up lightnings, vanguards, any other kinds of respective faction tanks or vehicles, as well as air vehicles. And it's somewhat required if you're going to be in a mechanical vehicle, seeing as if you're alone and you get damaged, the only other person that's going to be able to heal you is an engineer. So obviously you will want to be an engineer so you can heal your own vehicles. Now, putting points in this certification points does increase the speed at which it does heal the vehicles, but it does not reduce the overheat, so you still will overheat in the same amount of time and must wait for it to cool down. Now, earlier I mentioned the ability to heal or revive Maxis using the medic class. The engineer class is the only class that is able to actually heal up a Max to full. So acting as sort of like a support to a Max class is a very good role for an engineer to fill. That actually goes right along into the second point, which is the ammo resupply option that the engineers have. Engineers do not have a special ability on their F key like most other classes. Instead, they have additional items at their disposal which they can use to help out the team. One of those items, of course, is the ammunition package, which allows them to throw it down on the ground in a certain area, and everybody around that area benefit from animal regeneration. It's crucial, it's absolutely crucial to have this if you're trying to support a group of heavy assaults, because they will chew through uh, rockets, and having that ammo pack is so vital in order for them to stay back any kind of uh, armor push. Now, the points that you're able to put into the ammunition package does increase uh, the amount of time it stays on the ground as well as the radius. So if you need a larger radius to cover more individuals, you will want to invest points in it. However, after your initial investment, the point certification ramps up quite significantly. Now beyond this, there is also the mana turret, which is a stationary turret that the engineer can deploy and that the engineer can only be the only one to use it as well. It has a forward-facing shield, which allows it to uh, decrease as well as pretty much mitigate any kind of small arms fire fired from abroad. Now, it does have a weakness in that you can only rotate it a certain amount. So if you're able to get behind a turret or get to the side of a turret, it does expose, expose its operator to gunfire. Also, shooting rockets at it generally will destroy the turret as well as the operator. And anybody that's a sniper can also snipe the individual, seeing as their head is exposed. But otherwise, it's great for keeping people uh, from coming out as sort of a defensive mechanism. It's used a lot to keep people in their spawn areas, pr practically preventing them from coming out to try to recap or provide any sort of defense when you're assaulting a base. It is, though, highly, highly finicky. It will not place on a lot of t a terrain that is uneven, and it has to be practically a preset spot that allows for those guns That's to be placed there. on. You will find rocky terrain, a lot of Indar be unable to oh, deploy that there. weapon, and sometimes it will make the animation and perhaps not even throw it down. So you do need to be careful of where you place it. It will indicate places that you can put it down, but you do have to kind of sit there for half a second to make sure that it places it down. Otherwise, if you're trying to run and place it while you go, it most likely won't deploy properly. Now, beyond this, the engineer is going to be best served behind targets. They, of course, do have the capability, just like a medic, to take out targets. But seeing as they want to be behind those heavy hitters, they want to be behind the uh, turrets, they want to be behind the vehicles, they want to be behind the maxes. That is where they're going to be best served, taking shots at people with their gun and then switching to engineer. I mean, switching to their healing gun or their repair gun rather as quickly as possible to heal up targets. It is extremely crucial that engineers keep up turrets when they're defending a base, seeing as those base turrets, the anti-air turrets as well as the phalanx turrets, which is anti-vehicle, are crucial. They do so much damage to enemy uh, vehicles that it's very necessary that an engineer makes the rounds, maintains them, makes sure that they repair them so that they can actually be operated. If they're destroyed, only an engineer will be able to repair it back to full status. 
and it'll indicate that. However, it is very risky to be an engineer on the front lines, and oftentimes the explosions from tanks and other vehicles will end up killing you. So you do have to really make sure that you're in a position that does not get attacked. Other than that, guys, the engineer provides a indispensable asset to your team and is just as important as the medic. Besides that, though, the engineer does have different explosion explosives available to them, including mines, uh, bouncing beddies, etc. Different types of explosives for different environments. These are all, of course, unlocked with various certification points, and they have varying degrees of success. I myself have not used them personally, but I have seen a few of them use. And while they may not have the exact same amount of effect or usability or utility that ammunition packages or say mana turrets do, uh, they certainly do provide a unique sort of defensive style. For example, the mines can be placed in entrances where vehicles are going to come in. And unlike the heavy assault, which takes a couple rockets to kill an individual, a mine, a couple of mines, will outright kill a tank very quickly, seeing as there's no armor on the bottom. Overall, guys, both of these classes, you should highly check them out if you like to be some sort of supported class. They can do the damage, but if you don't even want to kill anybody, you don't have to. You can just sit back, heal people up, heal vehicles up, give people ammo, reap in all that sweet, sweet experience and certifications. I hope you guys have enjoyed this second episode here of our Planet Side 2 class overview. If you guys want to learn more about Planet Side 2, check them below at MOBomb.com for the full profile. I'll see you guys for the third and final episode soon. This has been Spunkify. Spunkify out. Later, guys.